get uh, started with the uh, next talk. So we're very happy to have uh, Fabio uh, Prusi, who's going to tell us something interesting. Good. Uh, okay. Yeah, it should be interesting because it's a sort of anagram of the team of the conference. The title of this talk is a sort of anagram of the team of the conference. Uh, so <laughs> the first part of it. Uh, so this is uh, something, a work that appeared in June uh, in collaboration with Federico uh, Dawi, who is a student in Oxford and Sakura. And also something uh, related to, uh, to a paper that uh, we published uh, uh, last year uh, in August. Uh, and it's about categorical symmetries from brains. So in particular, uh, so the main idea is that there is a rich interplay between two very different research areas, in, very separated in time. So it's basically a time travel between the 90s and recent years. And in particular, it's something that connects QFT from uh, string and M-theory, geometric engineering and holography, to uh, and brains in this setup, probe brains in this setup, to generalize global symmetries in QFT. Uh, so the, and this is a program, a program that uh, tries to understand how probe brains can encode the symmetries of the QFT, or more specifically, symmetries, uh, uh, symmetry topological field theory. So this uh, uh, gadget that has appeared many times during this couple of weeks. Uh, good. So let me give you a bit of motivation. So I will be quick because this motivation have appeared in uh, already in Jonathan's and Max's talk, but also last week. So with string theory and holography, we can access uh, some regimes of quantum field theory, which uh, are difficult to access otherwise, like strongly coupled regimes. Um, then geometric engineering and brain construction give a large class of non-trivial quantum field theory. Uh, many of them do not have a weakly coupled uh, UV Lagrangian. An example of these are, for example, UV fixed point in 6 uh, or 5D or the dimensional reduction like class S uh, that uh, we'll more or less are all familiar with nowadays. So uh, generically, these theories, have the, they have very interesting symmetry sectors as we have seen in uh, recent years. And uh, the goal of this program is somehow to understand how brains and geometry give an alternative physical way of understanding categorical properties of symmetries or global symmetries of this quantum field theory. And as a final motivation, categorical symmetries are encoded uh, by uh, symmetry TFTs, uh, as we have started seeing very recently as well. I mean, in two I mean, in lower dimension, this has already appeared, but in higher dimension, is a kind of recent. So, what is a symmetry TFT? Uh, in uh, uh, roughly, is an organizing tool for finite symmetries. So it encodes P-form uh, symmetries, P-group uh, symmetries, and also non-invertible symmetries. Uh, but also it encodes properties of these symmetries, uh, like uh, gauging, uh, so discrete gauge theories, uh, like BF theories, uh, condensation defect, anomalies, action on charge operator, and generalized higher charges. So, the, so this uh, talk is uh, uh, the first part of uh, it. Uh, it is about the first part of this uh, uh, paper, and uh, which is about this BF theory, the discrete, discrete gauge theories, and anomalies from uh, this symmetry TFT point of view. Whereas Federico will uh, deal with the uh, other more interesting aspects of symmetry TFT, which are uh, these three uh, these three properties of symmetry TFT. So I will focus on the BF discrete uh, theories and uh, the anomalies of uh, uh, from symmetry. 
So let me review, this has been already uh, discussed in many talks, so let me be quick on this. So let me review the symmetry TFT dictionary, and in particular, this sandwich picture. So the ingredient of a symmetry TFT, the principal ingredient is a physical QFT, uh, T, uh, sorry, tau with a symmetry S. And the goal of this program, of this symmetry TFT program, is to separate the symmetry sector from the uh, physical quantum field theory, uh, tau. Uh, the symmetry TFT is a bulk D plus one dimensional topological field theory that has two boundaries. One is a, um, a, a gap topological boundary, and the other boundary is not topological and is called physical boundary. And moreover, one can recover the theory tau by this interval compatification. So if you slide uh, uh, together the two boundaries, then what you get is the, uh, the theory and different uh, gap boundary condition, topological boundary condition, they can give you different theory tau uh, once you do this procedure. Okay, so the symmetry TFT encodes topological operators and charges. So the topological operators that implement this global symmetry, the global symmetry of tau, are the uh, topological operator Q, which are projected parallelly uh, on the uh, gap uh, symmetry boundary. The charge operator uh, OQ, they come from Q, other Q running from one boundary to the other. So they will source, for example, a, a physical uh, operator uh, in the theory. And the action of the symmetry operator on the charged operator is given by linking. One of the action is given by linking. So for example, this is the standard case of a P4 symmetry acting on operators of dimension P, but in categorical language, this can be of course generalized. So a very uh, nice um, example, which I like read a lot has appeared already, is the uh, symmetry TFT, which captured the one for symmetry sector, for example, of uh, N equals four superior Mills. Uh, that can be derived from ADS five crosses five, compatify on the sphere, on the five sphere from type two B supergravity. So this is this uh, BF theory, B two DC two, and in particular, uh, what one consider to really focus on the symmetry sector is a truncation of the compatify type two B supergravity action to the topological sector, uh, so that encodes only finite discrete field, gauge field. So in this procedure, for example, the kinetic term will not be uh, relevant because they will not capture the, uh, the, the physics of uh, uh, discrete flat fields. So we only truncate to the topological part. And when we do this limit, we can really forget about the metric. So of course, holography has more. So we have uh, the metric is very important, but if we want to focus on the symmetry sector, on the finest symmetry sector, this is enough to capture that. So this is just a, a, an anticipation. I will try to uh, tell you a, a, a bit more about this procedure later on. And so uh, one uh, from the symmetry TFT, uh, indeed one can study uh, the charge uh, and the charged operators, so the topological operators, and now they extend and now they are placed in the symmetry TFT, uh, for example, uh, depending, so here uh, I show just two, a type of boundary condition. One is when B2 is fixed and C2 is freely varying, this under, -compatif under compatification will correspond to the global structure uh, SUN for the 4D N equals 4 theory, whereas the other one with B2 is freely varying and C2 is fixed will correspond to PSUN. And these are the topological operator which charge uh, the, uh, the operator which extend from one uh, boundary to the other. Okay, so this was a, a first example that also was the derived from holography. So let me uh, a bit review how to, um, to get the symmetry TFT from string theory. So uh, we can engineer in string theory, a, a quantum field theory by placing the 10 or 11 dimensional space time on a particular background. The background can look like this. So a, a cone over a, a space which we call link, LN, uh, with a singularity at the tip. And uh, th this direction is called the radial direction. So uh, X 
as this radial direction, and L is the this space, uh, this compass space. Okay, so uh, the the way to get the symmetry TFT from this geometry is to compactify the 10 or 11 dimensional supergravity on this link space LN, and then take this uh, topological limit. And when we take this, uh, the topological limit, as we did for uh, n equals 4 super Yam means we, do, we can forget about the metric of the space. We don't care about metric fluctuations. So we can really ch change a bit the metric and connect with this sandwich picture. If in, in, so this process is uh, uh, that I also um, that I anticipated a bit before is to consider the flat gauge potential in d plus one dimension, and uh, uh, so we uh, so truncate to this uh, to this topological sector. In this uh, in this truncation, the super gravitational terms and the kinetic terms for the fluxes are uh, suppressed or, or irrelevant because they will describe the non-flat fluctuation of the gauge field. Okay, so the two boundaries, so th th there is a physical boundary that uh, gives, uh, uh, the non uh, that encodes the non-trivial dynamics of the theory, which uh, uh, is placed at uh, uh, r equals zero, and uh, whereas the symmetry boundary is, in pla is placed at infinity. And this also, uh, this procedure of taking this topological limit is valid also in holographic, in holographic setup. So in holographic setup, uh, you can have a stack of brains at r equals zero, and then uh, this stack of brain will back react in the geometry. So you have a near horizon geometry which looks like ADSD plus one, and um, and then you can truncate to this topological sector, and the theory um, and the, the symmetry TFT um, will live in, uh, and then we, you can connect with the, the symmetry TFT and uh, its sandwich picture. So of course, when you consider gravity and consider the full holography, but also in uh, geometric engineering, there is a uh, gravity. So you cannot really compactify, the, the, you cannot do this uh, interval compactification, but choosing a boundary condition, nevertheless, specify the uh, global structure of the theory because gravity mediates between the two boundaries in a way. So the gravity modes and the, also the, uh, the other fields in containing supergravity will mediate between these two boundaries. And so will tell us which one, uh, which global structure we have at the boundary. Good. Uh, so having reviewed the symmetry TFT, let's try to understand how probe brains realize symmetry in this picture. So topological operator can be interpreted as brains. Uh, so again, we have done this truncation procedure to the topological sector. And now we can still use some ingredient of string theory like brains and the topological limit also of the low energy effect action of brains to really encode the symmetry defect. Uh, let me remark that the symmetry TFT, especially in the, this new categorical language, does not really need a Lagrangian. So the, we have seen this already in QFT. So for example, uh, we can define a QFT by operator, the, the operator spectrum and correlation function. And this is similar somehow in uh, for topological field theory. So we can define the symmetry TFT, TFT in terms of the topological operator and how they link or they, how they are charged under each other. Okay, so let's go back to this symmetry TFT. Uh, the one from ADS cross F5 cross S5. And this symmetry TFT, uh, we can insert the in this symmetry TFT, the source for the brains. So in the five dimension, uh, we can insert a D1 and F1 brain in this way. So this procedure was already done by, uh, uh, by Witten in 98. So you can uh, insert the brain as defects in this way. And then you can vary the action. You can vary the action with respect of B2 and, the, and C2. The Gauss law, the equation of motion, they get modified. So you get these new uh, Gauss laws. And what these new Gauss laws imply is that the BF term corresponds to these uh, non-commutive fluxes. So uh, basically, you can compute the linking number between the two topological operators. Uh, in this way, and this linking number will be provided by this expression in terms of brain sources. And a simple computation then uh, links the linking number to the uh, expectation value of the topological operator once you exchange them, once you exchange the position. 
Okay, so this is a way of encoding the BF term in terms of brain and in terms of topological the operator, and now they link. So this is the standard of linking between topological operators. Okay, so the goal of this program is to generalize this procedure to any uh, setup in string theory, from holographic or geometric engineering. So we start from a uh, this flux sector of supergravity, which can be encoded in a democratic way uh, uh, by this action. So alternatively, what you can do, you can start from the Bianchi identity and reducing the Bianchi identity. This will give you the Gauss law in lower dimension. But instead of doing that, we propose this new gadget, which was there kind of already proposed in uh, uh, these other two papers. And then you dimensionally reduce this a new action, which is an action that has an auxiliary direction. So it's in d plus two rather than d plus one, and uh, where d is 10 or 11. So if you vary with respect of the fluxes, now the action, what you get is the Bianchi identity. It's just a gadget to uh, basically encode the Bianchi identities. Uh, this is, a, uh, the, for example, for type 2b, uh, but uh, you can do this also for M theory and 2a. And now what we do is to compatify this on the link, on the link geometry, ln. So uh, we take the flux action, which is this d two plus two dimensional action, and we reduce on uh, this space, ln, uh, to find a topological action in d plus two dimensions. So the physical QFT lives in d dimension. The symmetry TFT lives in d plus one dimension, and we have this auxiliary topological action in d plus two dimension. That's the result of the procedure. And then we can expand. So the, the result of this procedure coming, comes from exp the expansion of the fluxes in this way. So we can expand along the volume form of various cycles of the internal manifold. And the result of this, of this uh, uh, method is this action, which is uh, a topological action in d plus two dimension that has a polynomial term uh, of the uh, lower dimensional fluxes and also the source term. Because in the action, in the type to be action, we also insert the source, the source term, the brain source term. Good. So, and now by descendant or by integrating on the boundary, since uh, MD and two as MD uh, plus one uh, as a boundary, we can get the symmetry TFT action. So, we have many terms in this action, and one important term is the BF term. So the BF term, are, uh, they come from the boundary integral of this d plus two action. This is an example of this d plus two action, alpha f wedge f tilde plus the source term. So this is analogous, is, a, uh, is the extension in one higher dimension, for example, of the action I show you for n equals four, so by a miss with sources. Uh, the, the, well, the symmetry TFT for uh, n equals four, so by a miss with sources. So the BF term are generated by two types of terms. So from the Chern Simons of the flux, of, uh, so the D-dimensional Chern Simons, the D plus two dimensional Chern Simons of the fluxes. Um, so where alpha can, is usually given by the integral of the background fluxes, F background, and the volume form of, uh, uh, of, the, of various cycles. But in case of torsional cycles, uh, what you can do, you can implement a methodology uh, they developed in this paper um, in 2011. And you can, in this case, you can uh, uh, expand along non-closed form that they are non-closed in, uh, uh, in this way. And alpha will be this integral of the omega wedge omega tilde, where also omega tilde uh, satisfies a similar rule. And at the end of the day is just uh, the linking uh, number multiplied of the uh, the linking number of two uh, cycles which support this d omega and omega tilde multiplied by the torsional order of omega and omega tilde. So this is another way of uh, encoding this uh, uh, torsional cohomology. The other way is, uh, for example, differential cohomology. Good. And as shown for ADS cross S, S, S5 cross S5, by varying the action with respect of the fluxes, uh, so the BF term, uh, and uh, so you solve the equation of motion, then you, sub, you plug this back into the action, and what you get is uh, this linking number, and this linking number basically encodes the BF term. 
This is just uh, the linking number of uh, this uh, uh, topological operator. There are other couplings, generically. So, yes. Yes, that's the same I'm linking number. It's equivalent to flux non commutativity. So, the computation that I show you for the S cross S5 cross S5 is uh, basically the flux non commutativity. Thank you for the question. Um, there are more general links. So for example, there can, there can be triple linking. Uh, this is an example of triple linking uh, between uh, sources. Uh, so you express in terms of brain sources. Um, and uh, uh, this is called the Borromean rings or Mildor linking. I'm, I'm not going to detail of that, but these non more non-trivial linking will can encode anomalies or when, once you choose boundary condition, or they can encode um, a variation from the BF or digraph width and theory uh, for the symmetry. So the lesson is uh, many properties of the symmetry TFT can be expressed in terms of brain and their link. So let me uh, discuss some examples. And in particular, let me start. So we'll discuss three examples. So the first example is non invertible uh, symmetry defect from uh, D5 brains. In more general, well, uh, I will discuss about, uh, so these, uh, uh, the background that I'll, uh, uh, I want to uh, talk about is this klebanov strasser solution in 10-dimensional supergravity. So a klebanov strasser solution is a five-dimensional space, which has a boundary, uh, and the work product with T11. T11 has the topology of S2 times S3, and there is flux, uh, M unit of F3 flux on S3. So these, th these background engineers, the cascade theory, which have a lot, of, which have some properties in common with n equals one super Yamils. In particular, they share these two symmetries, Z, the, the chiral Z to M zero and Z one, one for symmetry. And they also have an anomaly, uh, which is a mixed anomaly between the zero for symmetry and the one for symmetry. There, there are also other anomalies, but let me focus just on this. Uh, and we can read off the symmetry TFT data, so the BF terms, so the discrete gauge theory, and the linking and the um, anomalies from the linking of the various brains. For example, I'll, uh, I show you, I'll show you here the two. Uh, so this is the BF term for the one for symmetry that comes from D3 on S2 and F1. This is the link that off link in linking between. Uh, uh, D3 on S2 and S and F1, completely extended in a five-dimensional space. And this is an anomaly. So this is the mixed anomaly, which is this tri uh, triple linking. And in this case, zero for symmetry defect are D5 brain wrapping S3 times S3 M3 at the boundary, so at infinity. Uh, so the low energy effective topological action particularly in this ca a case, is truncated only to the west to terms, gives the defect Lagrangian. And depending on various boundary conditions, this can give the invertible uh, zero for symmetry defect for the Z2M in case of SUN, or the non-invertible uh, symmetry defect, uh, zero for symmetry defect for uh, PSUN. So this was shown uh, in, uh, in these papers, and you can compute uh, various uh, fusion rules also using these brain actions. Another example I want to show you, which is a bit different in flavor, is uh, the Argyras Douglas theory, A2D4. So this uh, is a theory, but uh, the details don't matter for this theory. But this theory is engineered by uh, this ge geometry uh, in type 2B. So this is a singularity in type 2B, where tau is the marginal coupling of this theory. So this theory is a marginal coupling. So this QFT can also be realized from 1,0 SCFT in six dimension on T2, where the, the tau is uh, uh, the modular parameter of T2. And a special value of tau, this theory enjoys uh, duality and triality defect, like n equals four, very similar to n equals four. So the link of the Calabiao uh, free singularity, so this is a Calabiao free singularity, is a five dimensional space with torsional two cycles. And 
T3 on torsional two cycles at infinity are the two-dimensional one for symmetry operator because there is a torsional cohomology which has these two components. So we have basically uh, the analogous of the electric and magnetic one for symmetry. And the D3 on torsional two cycle along the radial direction are instead the charged operator. So it's a special value of tau. The geometry has automorphism that permutes the, tors the, the two torsional two cycle. And this uh, permutation uh, describes the duality and triality defect. So these are a subgroup of SL2Z because these are, they, they act on the, on the T2 cycles. Uh, but this is very geometric, so we cannot really encode this with brains, but there is a way around that we uh, address in this paper and is to turn on vor volume flux on D3 on these torsional cycles. And you basically turn on some B2 and C2 charges. So you turn on uh, PQ charges on the D3 brain. And if you, do the, uh, if you do that, then what happens is that the duality and triality defect we lacked on the PQ strings. And therefore, act, uh, by acting on the PQ strings, they can be identified with seven brains as it, it was done uh, for N equals four superior means. So this is an example of brain with fluxes or lower dimensional brain inside brains that generate symmetry defect. Another example, one last example is two groups from brains. So two groups can also be understood from brains. For example, in N equals four superior means we gauge group spin for N. The holographic is ADS5, uh, the holographic background is ADS5 cross uh, RP5. So zero for symmetry defect are outer automorphism that exchange the one for symmetry Z2S and Z2C with diagonal Z2V. And these are D3 brains on RP1. So there is a torsional one cycle, which is RP1 on RP5. And uh, Z2 uh, symmetry operator are NS5 on RP4. The charge object are F1 along the radial direction. And there is also a Z2S where the charge object are D5 on RP4. And, allow, and also extend on the radial direction. So the D3 brain will source a RRC4 field because the D3 brain uh, uh, source has an F5, so the C4 jump at the locus of uh, the, the D3 brain. And as we pass from left to right to the symmetry defect, then the, um, the C4 will induce an non-trivial F1 charge on the five brain. This is due to the vor volume coupling B2C4 on the um, on the on the D D uh, free brain, or in, on the five brain. Sorry. Okay, so let me conclude. So we basically in this paper we develop developed a generic, a very sorry, a, ge a very general uh, framework to encode uh, symmetry TFTs from brain and also the properties of uh, symmetry operators and charge operators in these symmetry TFTs from brains. So. We saw uh, that how to get the Lagrangian, but in principle, we can also focus only on the charges and on the topological operator of the symmetry TFT without rel relying on the Lagrangian. So we really look at the brain and the linking to focus on the, uh, to understand the properties of, uh, of the symmetry TFT. So this will provide hopefully an alternative way of understanding uh, the categorical structure of symmetries. And finally, so I, as I shown you in the, free ex, in the last free example, there is a, a variety of brains that can generate a symmetry, symmetry and symmetry properties like brains, brain within brains, brain intersection, brain junctions. And depending where they are, where they intersect, whether they intersect in the external space or in the internal space, they can give different aspects of the categorical symmetry. And with this, thank you for your attention. Questions? Yeah. Go for So there is a way of exploring. Non I, okay. Uh, so I, 
maybe maybe let me know if I misunderstood the question. So the question is whether uh, we can uh, using this uh, this technology we can understand also non supersymmetric. So this is very supersymmetry related, but we can also understand non supersymmetric uh, QFT or maybe also non supersymmetric object like non supersymmetric brains uh, in this. Uh, uh, in this uh, symmetry QFT. So for the first part of the question, yes. Uh, if you understand the deformation, for example, if you have a non-SUSI non QFT, which is related by deformation to a SUSI QFT, and the deformation, you know the deformation doesn't really uh, play any role with the, uh, the symmetry that you are studying, the symmetry that you're focusing on, then yes, you can basically inherit uh, the analysis from, uh, from, this, uh, from this technology. For the second part of the question, uh, I think, yes, this is possible, but uh, um, um, so one example is these are seven brains that uh, they have. So there are many other non susi brains that one can study. Uh, yeah, that would be an interesting also um, playground to look at. So this picture. Right, this picture. So the procedure I, I uh, so the procedure that I uh, gave you is not uh, um so it's uh, it relies on the holographic duality in this case, but it's really to focus on, on this symmetry sector. So um what's what's what is important is that um you really understand this part of the symmetry QFT. And then by holographic duality, you know that there is a physical boundary. And uh, of course, the full holography, holographic setup is very complicated because you have all the gravity modes and the supergravity uh, and are related supergravity modes. Uh, and, and But uh, this is, I think, a simple way of understanding at least the symmetry sector. And I agree, we basically focus on this part, at least in that sense, we focus on that part. Yeah, yeah. Misleading from the holographic point of view. I agree. But yeah, no, no, I agree. I agree with that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, an alternative way of understanding this is that uh, you can, uh, I mean, there is no separation and it's just a choice of boundary condition. That's uh, also an alternative way. But this, uh, this, uh, this nice uh, sandwich picture, it's nice because you can really, you know, uh, control uh, all the, you know, the, 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 the symmetry sector and uh, also understand various bound, different boundary condition in this very nice way and uh, how they, uh, are uh, how they give uh, you know the global structure, for example. Yeah, that's that's another that's a it's a it's a choice it's a choice yeah yeah no no yeah that's a, that's a, yeah but also a, a, but uh, yeah it's just that uh, it's a resolution that helps in understanding many things. Maybe I'll ask one. Um, so from like a bottom-up point of view, there's no guarantee that the symmetry TFT will have a very nice Lagrangian description. 
but it sounds like the machine you've built will always produce Lagrangian symmetry TFTs. Is that right? Or, and if, if you did not, if you wanted to get like the most complicated symmetry TFT, what would you do? Well, uh, I'm, I'm not sure I, uh, we classified all the type of linkings that can be between brains. So among brains. Super gravity action. And so yeah, no, no, no. you the reduce super, it and you no, have, the, the super you're going to get some variation on BF theory or whatever. Yeah, yeah. The super gravity action is, uh, um, uh, I mean, as, as uh, I mean, it encodes many examples, but there can, there can be many examples where, uh, other example where the, you have singularities and, uh, uh, for example, singularities at the boundary. And there, it's a bit more complicated. So, uh, but you can extend it uh, probably. I don't know whether then you can get all the, uh, the Lagrangian procedure, but uh, uh, for example, I think in 3D none, you had uh, an example where it was quite complicated because uh, um, this, the boundary had a, had a, had a singularity. Yeah, yeah, it was still Lagrangian, but you could not encode the fu fully the Lagrangian, I think. Right? As a, for example, ABGM, ABGM case is, a, is an example. An isolated similar. Yeah, though that that is continuous, right? So, in general, yeah. No, okay, that uh, that might be. A bit, I don't know. I'm, I don't want to commit to any answer, but. Uh, So for the next talk, we have uh, Federico Benetti, who's going to tell us about something interesting. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so uh, yes, indeed, uh, essentially, I'm going to continue uh, with this sort of uh, part two of this mini series of talks. Um, <clears throat> so I'm also going to cover some of the material that was uh, given in these uh, two papers that Fabio has also mentioned. Um, so uh, at this stage, uh, it's clear the uh, sort of context that we would be like, uh, we are interested in studying. Very broadly, uh, it's about quantum field theories that we can realize in string theory or M theory, by which I mean both geometric engineering, brain engineering, holography, uh, so a very rich variety of constructions. And have we have seen already a couple of times now, we have very strong motivations uh, to do so, uh, because we can learn very valuable lessons about uh, quite non-trivial aspects of quantum field theories in various dimensions. And uh, to me, a, a sort of very important long-term goal that um, I have worked on uh, for several years, and also many people in the audience have, is try uh, to characterize uh, what are the generalized global symmetries and their anomalies for uh, general quantum field theories that we can realize in string theory. Try really to have um, a picture that is as broad and as rich as possible to try and learn uh, valuable lessons about um, also maybe uh, aspects of QFD that are not directly related to string theory, uh, or maybe even trying to go the other way around, um, but maybe that's more ambitious. In any event, um, as we have seen um, already in Fabio's talk, uh, this is gonna be the uh, sort of setups we would like to study. So something that uh, in which the quantum field theory lives at this star, the tip of a cone or the location of some brains. And uh, essentially the uh, idea that has emerged in the past uh, few years is that indeed, if we consider probe brains in this sort of stringy setups, uh, we can uh, 
learn about uh, many aspects of the symmetries of the system, especially uh, finite ones, but not only. And um, related to the title of my talk that contains on the one hand, the condensation defects, on the other hand, the generalized charges, I would just like to emphasize here uh, a point that we have seen, for instance, also in uh, Jonathan's talk, that using brains, we can understand, uh, on the one hand, the symmetry defects, using this philosophy of brains at infinity that has emerged in the past year, uh, but uh, also charged operators um, that are I mean, operators that are charged under those symmetries. Um, in that sense, uh, I'll just like to remind you, we're going to see brains that stretch along this radial direction R uh, that uh, that cartoon uh, depicts. Um, <clears throat> so uh, in particular, um, there have been a lot of work in the literature demonstrating how uh, an analysis of brains captures very interesting aspects of higher form symmetries, as well as higher group symmetries. But uh, in a sense, the most exciting development in the last year or so has been uh, the realization that probe brains can also be used to go beyond group-like aspects of finite symmetries and try and, and, and start capturing something that is, uh, in a sense, more uh, categorical, fitting with the uh, theme of the workshop, uh, including most notably non-invertible symmetry defects, uh, but also, as I would like to expand on in this talk, other aspects that are um, beyond uh, group-like uh, symmetries, or if you wish, they're more towards the categorical side, and namely condensations, as well as this notion of generalized charge that uh, I will define for you uh, later uh, in a bit more precise way, as well as uh, hopefully maybe other uh, aspects as well. In a sense, we have just starting we have just started to analyze this uh, systematically. So uh, presumably there's many more interesting things we can learn. Um, so uh, after this very brief uh, motivation and introduction, also thanks to previous speakers, I could be brief, uh, I will essentially tackle the main point of my title, uh, first the condensation part, and, uh, and then the generalized charges part. Okay, so without further ado, we can uh, consider uh, the first uh, sort of kind of uh, problem I'd like to discuss, namely uh, condensation defects and uh, brains. So we know that uh, condensation defects are an important ingredient uh, if we wish to fully characterize and understand the symmetry structure of the QFT we would like to study. Uh, it's not wise to uh, ignore condensation defects. And, uh, and therefore, uh, this gives a strong motivation to try and characterize them in stringy setups as well. Um, here, I would like to uh, focus on a simple example. And uh, in this case, uh, we can uh, describe uh, in, uh, such a class of condensation defects uh, using the uh, bulk symmetry uh, TFT itself. If we wish. Uh, all we have to do is to consider uh, additional terms in the action for the symmetry TFT that uh, live on some localized uh, submanifold. So as a concrete example here, I am considering something essentially very similar to what Fabio has also considered uh, holographically, namely uh, some four dimensional quantum field theory with a, a discrete one form symmetry. This is the uh, BF term for uh, its five dimensional uh, BF theory. And this would be the extra terms that I'd like to interpret as a condensation. And here the argument is quite standard. If we think of this uh, equation of motion for a hat, and here the little a's only live on M3, whereas B2 is a bulk field, uh, we see that uh, we are reduced to flat fields with discrete holonomies in uh, Zm. And uh, by a standard argument, uh, essentially the path integral reduces to a sum over suitable uh, two cycles by uh, Poincaré duality, reproducing the intuitive picture of condensation as a mesh of lower dimensional topological operators inside a higher dimensional one, uh, which in the simplest case is simply the uh, transparent or identity D. Um, and, and here I just briefly like to emphasize that by no means this is the most general construction. We can have discrete torsion, we can have in general um, theta defects and, and other things. But for the purposes of this talk, uh, this uh, simplest example of condensation uh, would be uh, enough to convey the main point. 
um, after this uh, brief reminder, um, I can tell you uh, a natural proposal for the realization of a class of condensation defects in a string theoretic situation. And namely, uh, let's consider a combined system of a brain and antibrain. Uh, if there's a question, yes, absolutely. Uh, theta defects are loosely speaking a generalization of theta angles. Um, is the main idea amounts to considering a lower dimensional TQFT that you, in a sense, put by hand on a submanifold in space time that has some global symmetry uh, in common with your uh, original quantum field theory. And uh, and then you proceed, making sure that these two ingredients start talking to each other by, in, for instance, by a diagonal gauging procedure. So that it, it, it um, with ideas along the lines I have sketched for you now, uh, as it been uh, like works by by many by many authors, including people in the audience. Um, there, there are strong indications that a rich and vast landscape of defects can be considered. Uh, which in some sense can be regarded as generalization of condensation defects in this more uh, simpler setting. Uh, thank you. Okay, um, but um, yes, so how can we tackle this problem in, in string theory? And, and there is actually a very natural answer that suggests itself. Uh, let's consider a brain and an anti-brain. And uh, in, in a sense, it's intuitively clear that when they're going to annihilate, their top dimensional charge is going to cancel, leaving behind this sort of dashed uh, empty space, which is a depiction of the identity defect, if you wish. But crucially, we could have lower dimensional remnants uh, that can depend, that can remain. And, and of course, this is an old idea that dates back to uh, taking tachyon condensation, ideas of how to gen generate brains in general in string theory. Uh, which has also been explored recently in this nice paper where also fusion rules are studied systematically. Um, let me emphasize here, we're not interested in trying to recover the full uh, brain physics with tachyon condensation, which is generally a very hard problem, especially in curved space time. Uh, but since we are interested in studying finite symmetries, uh, actually the information we need relies uh, on the topological uh, aspects of this process. So it's much easier to study. And indeed, in a sense, all we need to do is to uh, keep track of the topological terms and couplings we have on the uh, brain anti-brain system and uh, and see how uh, it, it essentially does the job uh, that we would like to, uh, the thing we would like to achieve. Um, uh, yes? Um, let's see. Um, I would say that this proposal of brain anti-brain uh, realizes a class of condensation defects in string theory. Uh, but indeed, it would be. I think it would be interesting to explore other possibilities, and and that in, indeed might include naturally the study of something like brains within brains or excitation of brains along the lines of your question. Um, so I, absolutely, I think it, it's a it's a good comment. Thank you. Okay. Um, and so, how do we do this? Um, and here, essentially, I would like to connect to Fabio's talk. We have seen that in order to um, as an efficient bookkeeping device of the Bianchi identities of supergravity in the bulk that we then would like to reduce uh, down to lower dimensions, we can use an effective action, topological action that lives in, in two higher dimensions. And, and here essentially I would like to point out that uh, we can perform very similar formal manipulations to treat the topological terms that live not in the bulk of supergravity, but rather uh, on, on a D brain, for instance, this famous uh, West Zumino topological couplings. Uh, and in order to do so efficiently, 
uh, we can introduce a notion of anomaly polynomial, uh, if you wish. This is by formal analogy with the usual uh, descent procedure for continuous symmetries. And uh, as you can see, it looks uh, quite similar, except that now we have the field strength of the Ramon-Ramon fields. Uh, those are not closed, they're uh, sort of twisted by H. And uh, in, in this presentation, uh, in a sense, it's nicer exactly because it's a polynomial in field strength as opposed to uh, naked potentials. And uh, we find it particularly well suited for this task that we have of to uh, dimensional reduction um, and uh, which corresponds to the idea that we have to consider brains that are in general wrapped on uh, compact uh, cycles or submanifolds uh, in the relevant geometry we want to study. Um, so uh, this may be, uh, this is quite general, but uh, a little abstract. So uh, let me uh, essentially continue with the example that Fabio has already nicely introduced of the klebanov strassler setup. Um, the, the full uh, type to be solution is extremely rich, uh, but luckily we only have to keep track to a few uh, basic aspects, uh, as, as Fabio has already uh, emphasized, namely the topology of the link is simply the product of S2 and S3, and the fact that there is a flux on the S3 uh, factor, among other fluxes. Um, as we have seen in Fabio's talk, we can consider a D5 brain that wraps the three sphere and this gives us, uh, in this topological translocation regime, a uh, an object I'm calling here Q3. Uh, it's a topological operator in the five-dimensional SIMTFT of this system. Now, as Fabio has also mentioned, it's important to keep in mind that we have to commit to certain boundary conditions in order to uh, describe a specific um, absolute field theory. So if we choose those that correspond to the PSUM case, we know that we can bring this object parallel to the holographic boundary and think about it as a generator of a non-invertible zero-form symmetry defect. Uh, for instance, related to the mixed anomaly ABB that Fabio has mentioned. So based on this, uh, we expect to get some condensation defect if we consider a D5 anti-defined D5 brain that wraps S3. So what happens if we try to do so? Um, Actually, the, we, we can uh, follow the salient step of the computations uh, relatively easily. Um, I showed you this effective polynomial for the brain couplings. Uh, it turns out that in this instance, the relevant terms are only two, the ones there, with the various powers of little f, the gauge field on the brain, that come from the exponential. And uh, since we now have to consider if d5 anti d5, we simply add a copy of the same with its own localized gauge fields with a flipping sign due to the flip of orientation. We are then instructed to perform the integration over S3, uh, which can be done with standard tools to give us that uh, lower dimensional anomaly polynomial, where now we have this new guy, uh, little g2, which comes from big F5 uh, by dimensional reduction. And uh, at this stage, we know that we can perform a standard field redefinition. We have to be careful with like doing it with a uh, integral matrix. And we land on uh, this final form of the anomaly polynomial. And, and then the, in the final step, we recall that this anomaly polynomial is a tool to describe a topological action in one dimension lower, and we land on our final result. But this is nothing but the Lagrangian of the ZMK discrete gauge theory with the value of k fixed to be m by the computation. And uh, for instance, on spin manifolds and for m odd, we know what the periodicity of k is and we realize that we actually don't have the middle term so that we land on a condensation defect in this instance without discrete torsion. So this gives you uh, an example. And um, there is a second example we have considered, oh, sure. Um, in that case, uh, there is a uh, there is another um, mode of the bulk fields that uh, is relevant, and that um, effectively induces a uh, another Chern Simons term on the on the D five brain, so that uh, the the combined um, 
relevant three dimensional transimons terms on the word volume action are uh, encoded now in a two by two matrix. And, and, and it turns out to uh, encode um, essentially a, a trivial uh, an invertible theory. So uh, loosely speaking, the bulk fields act almost like a switch that can turn on or off this, um, this sort of um, topological terms accordingly to the expectation that uh, with the right boundary conditions, we only have an invertible defect in the boundary. Thank you. Uh, so uh, this other example uh, has to do instead with the uh, SO4, super young males. And uh, in the interest of time, maybe it's not super important to go through the details, but I would just like to mention one technical, uh, sorry, one qualitative difference, namely the presence of a torsional cycle. So this time the brain realizing the non-invertible defect we wanna study wraps an uh, RP1 inside RP5. And that brings us uh, a, a small technical challenge in that we are uh, dealing with something analogous to the flux and non-commutativity that uh, we are familiar with in terms of uh, torsional cycles at infinity. And uh, essentially, uh, it's not necessary uh, to go through this slide in detail. The, uh, the main message is that using, for instance, techniques analogous to what Fabio has mentioned, using non-closed differential forms to model torsional cycles, uh, we can efficiently perform uh, the uh, relevant dimensional reduction. And once again, we obtain the expected uh, three-dimensional gauge theories that are describing the condensation defects that we wanted to achieve. So this is to show that our techniques apply both to cases where essentially flux is the source of non-trivial uh, aspects, as well as to uh, torsional examples of like this one. Okay. So let me now switch gears and turn to the second part of the title, the generalized charges. And here I'm giving you a definition. Essentially, I simply mean by generalized Q charge, any non-necessarily topological operator of dimension Q that transforms non-trivially under some generalized global symmetry. And a way of making this characterization more precise and uh, is, is by using the SIM TFT, as we have also seen uh, this picture before. And ultimately, it's simply realizing that since the symmetry lives on this side, uh, there better be a, uh, an operator running uh, between the two boundaries that connects the object we want to study, the Q charge, to the symmetry itself. So loosely speaking, that's why we need some sort of messenger between the two sides. And uh, as we have seen, the easiest way for something to be charged is simply linking, precisely the BF linking that also appeared uh, in Fabio's talk in several examples, uh, but that's clearly not the most general thing that can happen. Uh, we know uh, from field theory examples uh, that we can have actions that uh, connect genuine to non-genuine operators, like in that in that picture. And, and more generally, we know that we should expect higher representation theory to be the correct framework to discuss generalized charges. Uh, this is all very interesting and it, it, it's been, uh, it is being developed uh, essentially right now. Uh, so the, the last part of my talk is going to be a way in which string theory can give us indeed uh, non-invertible actions of, of this sort. Uh, how is that possible? Well, uh, maybe some of you might have uh, already guessed. There is uh, a, a process in string theory that is very reminiscent of these pictures and is uh, an Hanani brain, a Hanani Witten brain transition, uh, which very generally is a situation in which two brains that share some directions in space time are linking and we try to unlink them so that uh, in the process, however, a third brain uh, is created. So that's exactly uh, as like in these pictures. And this goes back to the original example that involved an NS5 and a D5, but through T duality, S duality, many more uh, can be constructed. And here I would just like to uh, emphasize that connecting to uh, the formalism that Fabio has introduced, the magnetic sources for the fluxes that, as you can see, encode the linking of these two guys. Uh, th this is also a way to see the hanani witten effect uh, itself. Because if we uh, consider precisely these brain sources and their consistency with the Bianchi identities of the bulk supergravity, we learn that there are some non-closure relations that we can indeed 
interpret as the brain creation uh, effect itself. So the, the magnetic current for the D3 uh, has this non-conservation term, which as we can see is precisely the linking between the NS5 and the D5. Uh, and similar considerations can be made for other examples of Hanani-Witten transition. Um, so um, indeed, uh, we can revisit the klebanov strassler example. We have seen that the D5 on the three sphere gives us the non-invertible uh, symmetry defect. And uh, it's also known that the top line are D3 brains on S2 with suitable word volume fluxes. In this case, hanani witten corresponds to the creation of an F1, which we interpret as the magnetic one from symmetry defect of the PSU theory. So in other words, hanani witten nicely reproduces the known non-invertible action of this uh, non-invertible symmetry on the top line of the PSUM super young mills theory. But, uh, but in the last part of my talk, I would like to discuss another example. Before doing that though, I would like to emphasize that so far I have focused on this configuration, but it's not the only option. We can also consider another configuration in which both our initial brains uh, are uh, parallel to the boundary. If that's the case, when we try to, rather, yes, they, they are in the bulk, but they are parallel to the boundary. If we now try to unlink them, we still generate a third object. But as you can see, this object is now extending along the radial direction. So in a sense, that corresponds to a charge. This can be interpreted in two ways. If you wish, on the one hand, it's an ambiguity on the resolution in the radial direction of these two symmetry defects. Or alternatively, if you wish, we can imagine projecting everything down. And we, then we learn that the junction between two defects is itself charged under some non-trivial symmetry. And the, this notion of junctions being charged is a hallmark of uh, Toft anomalies. So in other words, I would like to emphasize how this hanani witten moves can account not only for generalized charges, but also for anomaly couplings uh, in the CMTFT. And finally, um, a concrete example. Uh, this is something that has already appeared in Jonathan's talk, is the brain realization of duality triality defects in n equal four superion mills uh, holographically, so in ADS5 times S5. And the rule of the game is to take a seven brain, wrap it on the S5, and, and that literally gives us the duality triality defect. Now, how can we use it in light of the hanani witten transitions I just mentioned. Uh, well, essentially there is a well-developed technology for hanani witten moves of PQ strings. Uh, by essentially TNS dualities, we can relate the vanilla, if you wish, hanani witten uh, story to a configuration like this. And here I would just like to emphasize the presence of the branch cut, the monodromy cut induced by the seven brain. But indeed, we can generalize to more general seven brains with non-trivial, with, with different monodromies and RS charges. So this is all very well understood and ultimately boils down to a statement about the conservation of the charge of these objects. So armed with this knowledge of the uh, mechanics of PQ string creations in this setup, we can now tackle uh, a physical problem um, in field theory Namely, uh, we can ask ourselves the following. So given that if we look at this process in the bulk, we always or generically create strings like this. Does this mean that we always have a non-invertible action on lines? In order to answer this question, we have to select a boundary condition that corresponds to selecting a global variant. Once we do so, we know which lines can end perpendicularly to the boundary giving us, sorry, which PRS strings can end on the boundary, giving us line operators. And here, the main observation is, if we now take the same sort of lines and we try instead to, to bring them to the boundary in a parallel way, we know that we're gonna get trivial operators in that case. So it means that we have a criterion for, in, um, for invertible slash non-invertible action. So in particular, if this condition is satisfied, so if any line that gives, if any of the RS strings 
uh, of this sort end up uh, generating a charge that lies in the same set, then we know that the action that we are considering is actually of invertible type. And we can use this as a diagnostic to decide whether the given duality to reality symmetry we have is group-like or not, or if you prefer, uh, non-intrinsic or intrinsic. Uh, so we have run this machinery and it uh, allowed us to go beyond known results at prime n. Uh, and, uh, and quite nicely, there has also been uh, then a field theory discussion of the same problem that agrees with the result from the hanani witten transitions. So this gives, this brings me to uh, to the end. I'll I'll skip the summary. It's essentially the title, and just mention that of course there are many things we would like to study. Uh, any it's always useful to have more controlled examples. And uh, another thing we have uh, started to consider in this paper, we'd like to consider more, is using brains to construct non-genuine operators. Uh, I, I can, if you wish, we, we, you can ask me. I can tell you more, and. More generally, uh, we have seen uh, a sort of non-invertible actions uh, quite explicitly, but can we probe other categorical aspects of symmetries? So is there a stringy origin to higher categorical representations or maybe symmetry fractionalization and several other aspects that remain to be studied? And with this, I thank you. Questions? Um, uh, yeah, that's a good question. So yeah, the question whether it was it was we can whether we can condense a subgroup of the symmetry, for instance, or something along those lines. Um, yeah, I think yeah that could be possible. It's something we haven't encountered in the examples we have studied. Uh, but in a sense, uh, yes. Thanks for the question. I guess it highlights that um, there is more to be explored. And but I'm confident that brain physics should accommodate for this sort of effect. Um, no, no, we we haven't looked at more general F theory setups, but it, it would be interesting to do so. Um, maybe. Well, it's not really a question to your uh, an answer to your question, but maybe briefly I mentioned this. Any Witten technology I discussed at the end uh, should also be applicable to the, uh, for instance, the Argeus Douglas theory that Fabio has discussed, given that the mechanics of the duality to reality symmetry is essentially the same. Um, but uh, no, we, we haven't explored more the F theory landscape. We come back.